You're watching Telecom TV from the Etsy Summit on 5G. And I'm joined now by Adrian Scrace, who is the Chief Technology Officer at Etsy. Adrian, thanks for joining us again on Telecom TV. When we look at 5G and IoT, the Internet of Things, do you really think we'll see 50 billion, or whatever the massive number is that's been predicted, of IoT devices on the network by 2020? I don't think anyone questions the size. I think it's inevitable that, that there will one day be 50 billion connected devices. The time frame is another question, I think. You know, whether that's going to happen by 2020, as some uh, industrialists have predicted, um, personally, my, I have some doubts as to that. Interestingly, at the Etsy Summit here today, we asked the audience that question, and the vast majority of people were not convinced that we would have 50 billion uh, by 2020. But they all accepted that it's going to happen one day. So when we focus on the vertical markets, do they all have roughly the same requirements? I mean, if we listen to what the European Commission has told us repeatedly, in fact, and, and documented very well that um, for 5G to be a success, it must embrace all of these in, these industrial vertical sectors, um, you know, the, the utilities, the broadcasting sector, the automotive sector, health, you know, and we have to find a way to embrace them and to bring them into the 5G family. Otherwise, 5G won't achieve the objectives that it set out to achieve. The difficulty is that when you when you first talk with these sectors, um, they're not necessarily speaking the same language as telecom standards bodies. Um, they have different ways of expressing their requirements. And somehow we need to collect all of their requirements and rationalize them into a simple set if we can, because it's just not economically viable to customize your offering to every little bespoke um, vertical sector. Interestingly, we had a representative from the European uh, utilities telecommunications council here at the, the summit today and he explained very succinctly that you know even within one nation different water companies or different electric companies will express their requirements in a different way so even within one nation it's not just a simple matter of collecting requirements so in summary an awful lot of work to be done there to to learn how better to capture requirements and to synthesize them into a comprehensible set to achieve the necessary economies, how do we drive down device costs and energy consumption? When we talk about consuming low energy, it might be that they're battery operated, and but 50 billion batteries is, is a lot of power. So it's, it's not the fact that each device uh, itself consumes a low amount of electricity, but collectively, what is the total demand on, on the networks? Um, so it, yeah, I mean, power con consumption, energy consumption, and efficiency is certainly top of the, uh, top of the list as is cost. Many of these devices may sit in the field and, and transmit no data at all for several years, other than waking up once every month to say, I'm still here. Um, now, if that's the case, you, you, you can't imagine these devices being tens or hundreds of, of dollars or euros each. You know, they have to be sort of less than $10 a piece. And yet they're quite sophisticated devices from a telecoms point of view. So that's a real challenge to get that cost down to, to a cost that will actually support the, the, uh, the expansion of the IoT market. Can we simplify IoT devices to work with just one wireless technology, 5G, and do away with legacy cellular and alternatives such as LPWA? I think one global standard is probably idealistic. I don't think we will get to that stage, but uh, a set of global standards that supply a, a, a set or a family of, of use cases. Um, but in, inevitably, they will be softwareized. So the, these are devices that are configurable from a software point of view, but the hardware components um, need to be as general as they can. Yeah. Is there a need to develop new business models to support these networks of massive numbers of IoT devices? Yeah, it's not just the business models, but the market conditions themselves, because um, for, for many of these use cases, it's, it's really not going to be a subscription-based model or a, you know, a transaction model. There has to be some other way to, um, to charge for the service other than the, the models that we know and love today. So I, I really see a change in market conditions as, as well as the regulatory regimes that support those market conditions. Based on today's events at the Etsy Summit, are we succeeding, or are there still challenges we need to overcome? Well, I think we're succeeding from the sort of the raw engineering point of view. We know we can do this. 
uh, where we're not making so much progress is fully understanding the requirements that each sector needs and the way in which we can deliver that in a market that um, that is sustainable and one where there is something to be gained by all of the players in that market. So I think there's an awful lot of work to be done uh, for IoT to become a sustainable market, if you see what I mean. But engineering-wise, uh, I think we've made considerable progress. Adrian, thank you very much. Thank you.